elections have helped move it towards democracy, but the ongoing violence, extremism and chaos still threaten the nation's most vulnerable citizens, women and children. Amid this turmoil, many courageous Iraqis are striving to protect their human rights. Many women in Iraq cover their faces in public for cultural and religious reasons. But Noor has a different motive. She doesn't want to be seen in public because as far as most people know, she is dead. Everyone thinks I'm dead, except for my uncle. I haven't seen my mom in eight months. They also told her I'm dead. 19-year-old Noor says that there were times when she would have welcomed death. She has tried to kill herself several times. I used to bring a knife to cut my arteries, or I would soak myself with gasoline. All I needed was the lighter to set myself on fire. Noor is a young woman with virtually no legal rights in a country still struggling after the fall of Saddam Hussein. But she found a champion among the activists who are working to transform Iraq into a nation of empowered citizens. She now has the courage to tell her story. Noor's troubled life began in this impoverished section of Basra, Iraq's southernmost city. Her parents separated when she was a baby, but when Noor was 16, her estranged father came back into her life. One of my father's friends had loaned him three million dinars. He didn't have the money to pay him, so he gave me to him. This amount of 2,500 US dollars made Noor his fourth wife. She says even after she gave birth to a baby girl, her husband was violent and abusive. I was sleeping in my bed and he pointed a gun to my head. He was so drunk and didn't know what he was doing. He did it twice. In 2009, the United Nations reported that the vast majority of Iraqi women regularly face domestic violence and many attempt suicide because of it. But as bad as things were for Noor, they were about to get much worse. When her husband spotted an unfamiliar number on a mobile phone, he accused her of calling a male stranger. I kept swearing that nothing happened, but he didn't believe me. Noor's husband returned her to her father's house and vented his anger on her. He beat me so hard that my skin split open and my blood splattered all over. Noor's father was prepared to execute her for dishonoring the family, but an uncle stepped in and pleaded for her life. Still, her father told everyone he had killed her to preserve the family honor. So Noor was forced into hiding and her baby was taken from her. At this, the darkest moment of her life, Noor had a stroke of luck. Her uncle found someone to take her in, Fatima El Bahadli, a women's rights activist who opened her home and her heart to Noor. She is my daughter and she will stay mine. Why are you crying? I want you to be strong. After so much pain, Noor finally feels loved and protected. I feel a mother's love. I haven't felt that for a very long time. Fatima advocates for Iraqi women to have a greater say in their lives, especially those who, like Noor, grew up in a conservative region of the country. There are practices of great oppression against women in those areas, so the women and children do not get educated. What's more, they have outdated traditions, such as tribal killings and revenge killings. As a result, women become victims. Fatima's mission is to help those women through her center, Alpha Dose, which is supported by the United Nations Democracy Fund. We help women by providing educational and awareness programs that tell her that she has rights. 
Alpha Dose fights for laws to protect the civil and religious rights of all Iraqi women and children. I have 10 cases of women who got married only according to Islamic rules, but not legally. They have children, but because their marriage is not registered, these children cannot get legal documents, so they can't go to school. Fatima Center is part of the Iraq Civil Action Network, or ICANN, a coalition that promotes democracy. Democracy in Iraq will take a long time and will require everyone's efforts. Yi al Jibuli, an attorney, heads ICANN. Also funded by the United Nations Democracy Fund, it trains men and women to add their voices to Iraq's fledgling democracy. In any transition, there are some gains and losses. But in Iraq, there are more gains, because now we can express our opinions, establish institutions, organizations and parties that used to be taboo. Fatima too sees progress in her country. She says to make progress for Noor, they asked a local sheikh to grant her a religious divorce because her marriage was never recorded by civil authorities. If I get her a divorce, then she will be free and not connected to a husband. Meanwhile, Fatima is so concerned about Noor's safety that she locks her in the house whenever she leaves. I always worried that someone might come and know she's in the house and kill her. After several weeks of waiting, Fatima and Noor finally got the message that they had been hoping for. Should I give you the good news? I just got a message from the sheikh telling me that soon Noor is getting the divorce papers. The thing God dislikes most is divorce. But it doesn't apply to Noor because she is a young girl who was abused by her father and then by her husband. Sheikh Saad al Husseini says Islamic law does not sanction a marriage like Noor's. Islam orders a man to respect the wife. But if I start abusing her by hitting her and starving her, this is not a marriage. But Noor is still waiting for justice. Her father and husband were recently imprisoned for counterfeiting and other illegal activities. But they have not been held accountable for their brutality towards her. When I was told they were in prison, I was very happy. As happy as if I'd seen my daughter. Because now I have hope that I will see her again. Noor also has hope that she can finally restart her life. Meanwhile, Fatima is one of thousands of activists who are fighting to transform Iraq into a country of laws and political participation, a democratic Iraq whose future is still being written.